everybody, this is Frankie Abrazino with the Uncensored Report. And today I'm talking a little bit about the economic realities that Trump is going to face. I read an interesting article by Snyder who put out some factors and some issues that are going to be confronting Trump as he um, go, takes over the White House in January and then has four years and hopefully, who knows, maybe eight years. And a lot of people are saying that it's a great mistake to underestimate the amount of damage that has been done to the U.S. economy over the past eight years. And I can tell you, every, whoever watches my shows knows, like, uh, inflation. I've been preaching for years. When you go to Publix, I know there's inflation. I see my grocery bill increasing, um, not only at Publix, but everywhere else. But the government tells me there is no inflation. And that's because they'll take X amount of numbers. There's, let's say, 500 numbers. They'll cherry pick the, the ones they need. Let's say they need 30 numbers. they cherry pick the best ones they need and come out and say, oh, there's no inflation. Look, it's great. But that's not the reality, the economic reality out there. If you take a cold, hard, honest look at the numbers, you should be able to see that the economy is in terrible shape out there, folks. And that's why we see things that are... Are, are just like in this video, in dire straits. And the only people that don't see it are when they're playing politics. Like the Democrats were playing a lot of politics. Oh, it's great, it's great, it's great. But now that Clinton didn't win the office, now they're saying, oh my God, the economy's reversing. Not sure how that it's reversing just because Donald's in the office. If anything, it's getting better. The stock market jumped, took off the dollars at all-time highs. But the truth of is that the result of the election isn't going to magically change the economic situation. These houses aren't going to magically get refurbed in livable conditions. You're not going to, these people in the ghetto of Detroit aren't going to see their life improve magically. It's still going to be a massive mess. And so this guy went through some, Snyder went through some of the realities that people are facing out there. And it's, this is common knowledge to a lot of people. One thing that uh, has been min in many articles is that 70% of m Americans have less than $1,000 in savings. And how is that? How are you going to survive if you lose your job on $1,000 in savings? How are you going to retire? How are you going to get out of this dire situation like the ones that these people find themselves in in Detroit here on the screen? Rudders reported that U.S. malls, the investors are poised to lose billions of dollars and they're calling it the retail apocalypse. And we're seeing that here at um, UTC, locally in Sarasota, where the Benderson, the developers coming down on the mall, the management company owner, whatever his status there is, and saying, look, something's got to be done because it's in dire straits. You go in there, it's almost like a ghost town. And the cost, of the, you know, a lot of the retailers are leaving there because the costs associated with opening a business there. How about credit card delinquencies? Everyone's telling you, go out. I remember, I think it was Bush, he used to say, and I think it was after 9-11, buy, buy, buy. We'll show them, buy, buy, buy. Put everything on credit. No one, if you only got $1,000 in your savings account and you're buying, buy, buying, where's that money going to? To your credit card. And how are you going to pay that credit card off if 70% of the Americans don't have more than $1,000 in their account? And it's that's the delinquencies, I guess, are at the highest level since 2012. And they also came up and said, look, it goes even way beyond that. On these credit cards and everything, 35% of Americans are in debt past 180 days. That means they're going to start being collectors, getting collectors, knocking on their doors, putting them through more stress. They're not going to be able to, they're going to be, they're basically in dire straits. Home ownership is down. It's, in, it's, it's fallen to the lowest level in eight years. It's hovering at a 50-year low. A lot of that is a lot of people are worried about the bubbles. I know where I live on the island, everyone says it's a huge bubble because the pricing is outrageous for a house right here. And a lot of people are worried, are we going to see a second bubble like we did a few years ago? And so that sits in the back of their heads. And how about the poor people that can't go out and buy a house and they have to pay rent? Rent is through the roof, which is impacting middle class and lower class individuals. Another number he looked at is the uh, government employees. Basically, they outnumber the manufacturing employees. And that's a sad story. And most of this is due to stuff like NAFTA, uh, TPP, if it ever came to fruition, which hopefully it will not now with Donald. Um, where all of our manufacturing jobs are going overseas. But think about it. There's more government employees that basically essentially produce nothing out there than 
manufacturers and the numbers by almost 10 million. That's a huge amount. The number of homeless people, even in this paradise, they like to, um, they, in my city I live in, they like to put out this perception of this paradise. But you're seeing more and more homeless here, more and more homeless in Sarasota. And it's, they're saying it's in a new high. And of course, that goes to the credit card debt. It goes to having a thousand dollars in your account. I mean, if you lose a job, and a lot of people can't get jobs because Obamacare restricts you. They don't want to put you over X amount of hours because then you might have to, or X amount of employees, I think it's 50, because then if you're full time, they got to follow the Obamacare uh, restrictions. So they keep you part time. 20% of all young adults are currently living with their parents. Now, this is crazy because I, I thought when I was, my kids were 18, they were out of the house. I'm finding out I'm stuck with them. <laughs> Uh, but it just goes on and on. It talks about our uh, debt, you know, basically trillions of dollars in debt. This um, just doubling the national debt under Obama. Obama didn't see one single year of U.S. GDP growth. That's crazy. Above uh, by at least three percent. I shouldn't say none. By at least three percent. So no, Donald, the Don, the Trump is not going to just walk in and clean things up and change everything. And it's great that people are optimistic, but you should. Keep in mind that he's not this magician. He's not going to just snap his finger and things are going to change. And it, it, this guy did a comparison of when the last time Republicans came to the House and they had both um, houses of Congress. It was Bush Jr. And they looked, they said some of the issues that are on the agenda now. Borders, did he do anything about them? No, they didn't. Control both houses? He didn't do anything. Did they pass legislation to stop funding of illegals and the, deporting them? No. Did they get rid of uh, Clinton's executive orders? Right now, everyone's saying Donald's going to get rid of the executive orders that uh, Obama just did with his uh, pen and his phone, a lot of them. And, you know, if you look back, Bush only got rid of one or two of Clinton's. The rest stayed in place. Will Obama do, will Trump do the same thing? Federal regulations, you know, Republicans are big saying they don't like the federal regulations. And as we all know, Obama was one of the worst and pushing, I mean, just enormous numbers. I forget the specifics, but over 3,000, I think, this year. And Bush did nothing. So things may or may not change. Now, everybody, there's a lot of hope that Trump will change it, that he's a lot different than these rhino Republicans that are out there. But, and, but there's going to be a lot of pressure of the status quo. A lot of lobbyists, a lot of powerful people saying, hey, look, we don't want the change you're pushing. We like the system the way it is. And if you think about it, the only reason we in America enjoy the standard of living that we have is because we print so much money. We have so much national debt out there. It's an inflated standard of living. We borrow trillions upon trillions of dollars at these low rates that the government gets itself. But think about it. We actually spend more than we bring in in taxes by a ton, a shitload. So the federal government, if they were to stop and just start spending how much they brought in visa ta via v taxes, our ridiculous debt fuel standard of living would start to collapse. That's how bad it is out there, folks. And it's going to impact our kids. Either, either Donald Trump will continue to borrow money to keep the standard of living that we've all enjoyed as Americans, or he's going to pull in the reins, which needs to be done. And then you're going to see a major economic downturn. And then heads were rolled. The Republicans, Democrats say, we told you so. It was so, you know, basically, this president, Donald, the president like Donald Trump, is going to be faced with some very harsh economic realities that he's going to pass on to the next president or continue to deal with if he goes beyond four years. And it's good that you have faith in Donald and you need that out there. But he can't pull off an unprecedented miracle. And so there is, you don't need to be, be deeply skeptical, but you should be skeptical. And, you know, at least hope for the best, but be skeptical. Skeptical. I can't even speak today. But prepare for the worst. All right, this has been Frankie Abrazino with the Uncensored Report.